let's analyze this. Alibaba has released a new version of their open source WAN video generation model, dubbed WAN 2.2. Now this is an improvement over the previous version of this, which was WAN 2.1. And beyond just some general performance improvements, there are actually some interesting architectural changes here to this new family of video generation models. Now, first and foremost, something I do want to mention is that in the GitHub repository for this new model, they do actually have a link to the comfy UI workflow for this. Now, personally, I do not use Comfy UI and I'm not very familiar with it, but something of note here that I would like to specifically mention is that for the smaller version of the newly released WAN 2.2 models, which is a 5 billion parameter dense version, apparently it can fit well on 8 gigs of VRAM with the Comfy UI native offloading. Now, I do mention this because I know a lot of folks are interested in the Comfy UI workflow and like to use it for different things, but that is also a significantly reduced amount of VRAM utilization than what we will see in today's video, where we will basically just be running it through the command line examples as listed here in the Hugging Face model card. So I want to mention that as it could be of some interest to a number of folks. There are a few things of note in this new release, one of which, of course, is just that there is a large amount of improved training data. So basically, they mentioned right here, it has around 65% more images in the training data and 83% more videos. So obviously, as one would expect, this notably enhances the model's generalization across multiple dimensions such as, and then just basically a bunch of things related to video generation. However, something I find very interesting here that is a bit more technical in nature is that they actually have implemented a mixture of experts architecture here in one of the new WAN 2.2 family of models. So we see that mentioned right here, but essentially if we scroll down a little here, we can see that the 14 billion parameter version of this model is now actually a mixture of experts architecture. So this is actually a 27 billion total parameter version, but with 14 billion parameters active per step. And as they say right here, this keeps inference, computation, and GPU memory nearly unchanged. So one 2.1 had a 14 billion parameter model as well. However, it was not a mixture of experts model. So as we can see right here, this is 27 billion total parameters now. However, it stays about the same as the previous 14 billion parameter model. They do mention here, and again, don't quote me on any of this, so this is unscientific, but essentially they have a two expert design tailored to denoising process of diffusion models. So the first expert is a high noise expert for the early stages focusing on overall layout and a low noise expert for the later stages refining video details. So I think essentially one can think of this unscientifically as basically what we see in this chart right here, where there's an expert for the early stages, which you can just think of as like setting the scene and things like that. And the later one, which would be refining details once the general scene and everything like that has been set. So that's kind of what this little chart here shows. For today's video, we're going to be focusing on the 5 billion parameter version of WAN 2.2, which for those like myself who have a 24 gigabyte card is what we will actually be able to use for generations. To quickly mention some of the hiccups I encountered when installing this, we can see on the GitHub repository for WAN 2.2, there is a really simple installation process where you clone the repository, go into it, install the requirements, download the models, and then you can basically go ahead and start running the generation. The first thing that I encountered that was of some difficulty is something that they actually mentioned right here, where if the installation of flash attention fails, try installing the other packages first and then install it after. So the way around that is really actually quite simple, where here is the cloned repository on my system. I just went ahead and went into the requirements.txt and I commented out the flash attention install there and then manually installed it after all of these were installed and then it did actually work correctly. The only other thing is that it was running out of memory during the end of the video generation, so I just exported the um, flag for PyTorch not to allocate as much unused memory, which I will show here as well. In order to counter the out of memory error that I was getting, I simply just did this in the terminal where you export this flag, which basically just um, gives you more free VRAM and less allocated but unused VRAM to put it very simply. In addition to that, I do just have a couple of things right here. Basically a few prompts that I want to test this with as well as the 
command to actually run in the command line interface here so we can actually do a text to video prompt. Now, first and foremost, the prompt that they give us as a sample is two anthropomorphic cats in comfy boxing gear and bright gloves fighting intensely on a spotted stage. Now, I actually did already go ahead and generate that as I wanted to just test and verify that this actually works. So we'll take a look at that right here. <laughs> so beyond just being like really kind of funny, I will notice that this was the default prompt that was included with the previous one 2.1. So I actually have a sample reference clip of that that we'll also look at just to be able to compare the two. But there are a few initial things that I notice first and foremost here, one of which is the actual eyes on this cat on the left are far more intricate and actually just better generated. And beyond that, it is just overall of higher quality, I suppose we could say. So I'll play the comparison clip right here real quick, just so we can get a reference point for the improvement in the version of one that is able to be run on 24 gigabyte cards. So with that, I want to go ahead and run another prompt now. And please keep in mind as we do this, that this is not the cool mixture of experts version of this model. It is one 2.2, but it is the 5 billion parameter dense model here, which is of course the one that is able to be run on consumer 24 gigabyte cards. You would need a much more, um, as I say, beefy setup to run the 14 billion parameter variant. However, the original one 2.1, I do believe the one that ran on a consumer GPU like this was a 1.3B. So this is a significant improvement in size parameters at least. So after a little over 13 minutes, our generation has been completed and we can see that it just saves it in the default cloned directory right here. So let's go ahead <laughs> and take a peek. Oh, that was the wrong one. Here's the new one. Again, <laughs> these are tough to kind of, art is very subjective, <laughs> but with that, um, it does look like old computers that are being recycled. Um, it looks like the folks who are going to be doing the recycling are perhaps getting into a fight amongst themselves. Um, some of the facial features and things like that seem a little horror-esque, if you will, but overall, <laughs> I guess it is a result is five seconds uh, at 720p at 24 frames per second. I will say the background while static does look very interesting like the buildings and things like that in the top right. Um, the leaf behind them, it does look like it did go ahead and put these on the sidewalk which is where computers would perhaps be left if they were to be recycled. And then we have a gentleman here who I don't exactly know what he's doing but he has a hat on. So yeah, overall um, perhaps a very uh, artistic result. <laughs> Now, obviously, when doing video generations, the depth and intricacy of the prompt will have a large result on the actual generated result. Um, obviously, that is kind of for anything, but I think very specifically image or photo generations. So here we're just going to go ahead and try what is essentially an extended version of a panning aerial shot of a crowded beach in an alien world. Again, this takes a significantly lengthy amount of time to actually go ahead and do the generations. The previous one taking a little over 30 minutes. So we will just go ahead and basically see what happens with that. In right around the same amount of time, our new video has been generated. So let's go ahead and see how this does with a more intricate prompt. Oh, <laughs> I got to stop doing that. There we go. All right. Um, hmm. I'm just trying to take it in. Also, I need to figure out how to get that stupid like video name to go away with VLC. Um, please give tips in the comments for that. Decent, somewhat static, and this is giving me vibes of like the Oculus Quest 3 when you put it on and you're in like that home area. It kind of looks like this. <laughs> All right, well, let's just go ahead and... This is very static. There's not a lot of kind of movement here, and I did say a wide cinematic panning aerial shot, and panning would imply like... But this seems to omit the panning. The water does move nicely. I will say, looking at the shadows of, um, call these moons or something on the water, the light is properly kind of reflecting whichever planet is in what location. So um, that is blue for that one. That is yellow for that one. Seems to be some form of party or something. There are these jellyfish and seemingly some moving cactus leaves here. 
uh, very crowded beach. We do see movement of the beachgoers as well. So overall, um, acceptable, but not quite panning. All right, I want to try something a little weird and lackluster, but truthfully, our very detailed prompt didn't really perform as well as I wanted. So I'm just trying it with a POV of a person working out at a gym. Um, it could be scary, but it also could be good. <laughs> All right, let's take a peek at our gym POV, which is going to be probably kind of funny. <laughs> what is that person doing? <laughs> you know, all right, let's analyze this. I will say that it does have proper gym elements uh, in the video, definitely. You can see the machines over off to the right. It does seem like that pillar maybe, oh no, it doesn't disappear. It disappears. The movement here is pretty good. The footsteps are actually somewhat accurate and the way the hair is actually moving left to right does somewhat correspond with the movement of this individual. I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. It almost looks like someone pushing like a sled or something if, that you see at the gym, which would actually be on this greenery area in a real gym. So I suppose that's attention to detail and realism. Aside from that, there is actually no sled that is visibly being pushed, which definitely takes away some of the realism. The ceiling is kind of gym aesthetic, I suppose where it's just like an exposed ceiling and you can just see like the fire retardant and stuff like that sprayed on or whatever that is. Um, there's some mirrors on the wall over here. Um, and yeah, uh, I guess there's not so much else to say about that, but it did definitely do a re reasonable job um, aside from this. Now, again, this is supposed to be a POV of a person at the gym. So yeah, so interesting and very, very interesting. <laughs> So I want to test the image to video capabilities as well. So <laughs> I've just given it this photo. Um, we don't need too much context around why the photo was taken or what it represents, but we will see how well this goes ahead and kind of brings this photo to life. <laughs> All right. I am um, <laughs> somewhat concerned seeing. Huh, huh, uh, <laughs> that's just not right. <laughs> Um, uh, well, okay, I want to notice a few things. <laughs> All right, so after um, gathering my thoughts here and also disabling the overlay of the file name in the video, which was very annoying, I will say the part of this I am by far most impressed with is well, okay, apparently it put a ring on my finger there, which is interesting, but the movement of this robot is fantastic in that it really accurately gets it moving on the joints of this actual robot. This is like, a, it's an old mechano humanoid robot that I'd kind of played with a little, but you can see that its head actually moves here and it does just have proper movement, I guess, in the way you would expect a humanoid robot to. So basically we shake hands and then I begin waving to the camera with a rather terrifying smile. I, you know, the camera has motion kind of like someone is filming this, which is a little like stuttery and staggered, which would be if you were like having an amateur film something. Overall, I'd say this is um, a result. <laughs> So now let's just quickly go over all of the, okay, we can close that. Let's just go over all of the generated videos that we had here one at a time so we can just kind of wrap up and see what we did. So first and foremost, we had our recycled computers fighting back, which again was uh, perhaps not the best in that I noticed this has trouble accurately giving folks facial features without making them look terrifying. So that is definitely a downside. Aside from that, we had uh, this, which we just kind of saw. We don't need to look at that one too much. The next thing we have is the quote unquote wide cinematic panning video here, which didn't really have any cinematic panning or any panning at all. But I suppose the generated elements and things like that were all right. I would say quality wise, this is probably the best one in terms of not looking immediately like really wrong to like a subconscious level. Following that, we had the gym POV where this one really was not bad aside from the like phantom sled that would have been being pushed by this individual right here. The movement of the hair and the overall body movement here, even the way the cloth clothing is kind of like moving to fit the contours and movement of the body is quite decent. And then aside from that, we had the original sample generation, which was just the two cats boxing. Um, 
again, this is a sample one that they tell you to prompt with. So I always put less weight on the generated quality of the results of suggested sample generations as they could be poised to perfectly do those. With that, each generation was around 13 and a half minutes on a single 3090 Ti card, which is relatively slow. And again, this is the 5 billion parameter variation of this model, which we tested. So unfortunately, in this setup with a 24 gig card, we are not able to test the big beefy MOE variant of this, which is either the text to video or image to video 14 billion parameter MOE of this, which would obviously perform at a much higher quality, but requires far more intricate hardware. So with that, I do just want to remind folks that there is also the comfy UI workflow here, which touts being able to run in eight gigs of video RAM. So this may be something that folks are interested in seeing. Um, again, we definitely did not get results like this. Again, that's the 14 billion parameter one, but um, if we were to do this locally, the face here would probably look quite horrifying. So with that, <laughs> that is going to sum up our first initial testing of one 2.2. It's cool to have open source video models, especially considering the price of some of the closed source state of the art ones, and they are always fun to play with depending on one's personal area of interest. So with that, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments.